one of the side effects of um, of getting involved with some of the wounded warriors. Uh, you know, we started serving uh, severely wounded coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan back in 2003 when the war in Iraq was first declared, and literally been able to serve uh, over 8,000 of the most severely injured uh, since that war, uh, since the war began. Uh, again, in part because of the support of corporations like Anthem. A lot of this is private sector funded, and um, one of the things that the Warriors are really good at is once they get involved in a sport, they really want to push it to the limit. And they really almost pushed us as an organization to think outside the box and think about things that might be possible. And um, one of the Warriors uh, had, it was a double leg amputee uh, who had lost both of his limbs in, in Afghanistan. And um, he wanted to try to uh, climb a big mountain. You know, there's these these large mountains all around the world. One of them is Kilimanjaro in Africa, and that's at 19,000 uh, feet is the tall is the highest mountain in Africa, and it's one of the seven summits that mountain climbers love to to challenge themselves to do. Anybody with a, without a disability, and uh, we had no idea whether a double leg amputee could make it or not. But we said yes. If you want to try, we're going to you know dedicate the time and resources to train you and and get you on, you know up to snuff. Well, in the process. He challenged me to join him uh, and um, and try the mountain. Well, of course, you know I'm I'm a guy now uh, in my um, uh, in my 60s and uh, saying to myself, what the hell am I doing this for? But I took the challenge and we um, ended up going up the mountain with uh, three of us. Two, the other two wounded warriors were double leg amputees, so we literally had one good leg between them, my my single leg, and um, and we spent uh, six days getting to the summit and made it. Uh, it was the most fantastic experience in the world. But, you know, the learning experience of going through the training there was really uh, amazing, even for me after all these years of getting involved in sports. And it was um, it was really a life lesson in what you can do if you really set your mind to it. And, you know, part of, of the climb was learning, you know, what, what adaptive equipment we needed, uh, you know, what kind of training methods we had to adapt. We had to adapt our climbing methods because of the disability. And as James has said, you're constantly having to deal with making adaptations, but that's really what life is all about. And um, so we were able to make the adjustments, get the right equipment, that's very important, and have the training opportunities available, and we're able to achieve the summit uh, with one good leg. Um, and um, that really was the highlight of, of uh, certainly my career, uh, of, of being on top of that mountain, looking down over the Serengeti plains of, of Africa, and uh, it's just the most phenomenal experience in the world. But you know, it, that, that climb is very much like rehabilitation. Um, you know, when you think of something as daunting as climbing a 19,000 foot mountain, you know, you can't just get there immediately. You have to think in terms of taking one step at a time and achieving that goal after many, many thousands of steps. And that is what rehab is all about. And as a way of encouraging others to, to get involved in sports and to, to come back from disability, we use that as a lesson, you know, that don't get discouraged by the fact that you think that your task of becoming, you know, active again is going to be an impossible task. Just take one step at a time and you'll be surprised at how much progress you make um, in, in achieving that, that independence again uh, that comes from being involved in, in sports after your disability.